All right, this video will focus on ocean geography or topography or the shape of the ocean floor. But before we even get started on this, I want to talk about the difference between oceanic crust and continental crust. So some basic geology here. The continental crust is the crust that sits underneath a continent. As you can see, it is very, very thick. So you see here the continental crust is extremely thick and it can be between like 5 and 80 kilometers thick. So it's very, very thick. And now, be meanwhile, the the oceanic crust is very thin compared to continental crust and it's only ever 10 kilometers thick so it's much much less thick than the continental crust is so remember that the continental crust and the oceanic crust are different so when you see here you see different plates in 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 the screen and i'll show you where the plates split up there's a split right here marked by the trench another split right here marked by the mid-ocean ridge and then, which means that you have three plates or plate tectonics here happening. Three pieces of the Earth's crust. Now, in this piece here, which I will call piece A from now on, the leftmost piece, you actually have both continental crust and oceanic crust on the piece. You see, you see that there. On the piece in the middle, that's piece B, you only have oceanic crust. You don't have any continental crust. But on PC, all you have is continental crust. So you see how the crust of the Earth, those tectonic plates, can be made of different parts. They can be made of both continental crust or oceanic crust, or just oceanic crust, or just continental crust. Now, when you talk about an ocean, why do you define an ocean? Well, we tend to define ocean by anything that's underwater, right? So the areas of the world which are vast, uh, vastly under salt water are usually considered part of the oceans one continuous vast part of water now the if you think about it um, that depends because what do you define as a continent now if you define as a continent the piece of land you can see then you would have to say the continent changes every day because the tides will be eroding the continent the, the tides will be putting the continent on the water and then less on the water and less. that would mean the continent shrink and, sh and stretch over day that really makes no sense so the formal definition of a continent is the is a continental crust so if you are part of a continent that means that you are going to be one continuous continental crust so this right here all the way to the end of the continental crust we consider part of a continent and all of this will be considered part of the other continent um, and that's the geological classification of the actual continental body Anything that's part of the continental crust is automatically part of the continent. That means that some of the continent is actually part of the ocean. That means underwater. And that's something that I wanted to clarify. So, there are two main parts of the ocean. There's the ocean parts that belong to oceanic crust. Or in other words, parts of the ocean which are deep underwater and are part of oceanic crust only. So, for example, from here all the way to here, that would be considered oceanic crust only and that we call a deep ocean basin now there's also ocean parts which are actually above continents or continental crust like this piece over here or this piece over here and those we call continental uh, margins which are the pieces of the ocean which are above a continent so when you think of a continent you're gonna think of the part which is above water and the part below water which is also um, um, part of the continental crust, in other words, the continental margin. Now let's talk about the structures of the ocean floor. The continental margin, which is the part of the continent underwater, actually splits into um, three different parts. You have the continental shelf, the continental slope, and the continental rise. And you see there that on the top left-hand corner. Now I'm going to start on this side. This is also continental crust, but I'll talk about this side because it's a little simpler. Now, the first most prominent feature of the continental margin, which is part of the ocean, is called the continental shelf. To explain the continental shelf, I have to draw a square. So give me a second. So imagine for a second that this box here represents an ancient continental uh, uh, crust that was there not necessarily covered by ocean. And then you're going to have, on the other side, um, the ocean is going to start coming through and actually waves are going to be hitting this constantly and it's going to start eroding this and so the waves are constantly hitting this eroding it and cutting chunks out of it before you realize start getting this slope here now obviously the waves will go into a certain depth anymore so it can't erode more than that right and but with time the waves will more and more destroy the continent piece and cover underwater but 
it will never go lower than this because the waves will never go lower than this. And so while this process will continue in this direction and the continental erosion will continue over time, and then over time you're going to get more and more continent disappearing because of the, of the motion of waves constantly hitting the continent and you're going to erode it, you are never going to get below this point because that is as deep as the waves will go. And so what you end up getting is this steady slope uh, below the water, which is called the continental shelf. shelf. Now, eventually, when you get to that point where the, the waves no longer act, you get a sudden drop-off where the shelf just goes boom all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. And that we call the continental slope. So the continental slope is right here. And the continental shelf is this st steady, steady incline towards the continental slope. When you get to the slope, it's a sudden dip of the actual slide. Now, you might end up over time get a little bit of like a, of a slope. It's much more steep than the continental shelf. Be. And why is it you're getting this gradual slope? Because of landslides. Now, ever so often, you see here in the picture, you're going to get a landslide where the continental shelf will, because of an earthquake, will destabilize and will collapse and form a landslide. By the way, whenever that happens, all that dirt that's coming from the continent mixed with the water in an instant and it causes what is called a turbidity current. It's a deep, murky brown water that actually pushes all the water forward and actually causes a tsunami. So one of the things that causes tsunamis is the collapse of the continental shelf. Now, as the continental shelves collapse, you actually get these gaps in the continental shelf, which are called submarine canyons. And these gaps went on to become a bunch of, of, of sediment that gets thrown into the deep ocean basin to create this sl slope that we're talking about here. It's a bunch of sediment that's really all come from the collapse of the continent. That is what we call the continental rise. So for review, the continental slope is the steady decrease of the continental shelf because of wave erosion. The continental slope is the sudden deep dip as, as the continental shelf ends and it's sudden because that's the area where the continental shelf ended but there's no erosion happening there. And then you have the continental rise which is the accumulation of landslide material uh, over centuries of, of destabilized continental shelf creating canyons and turbidity currents and things like that. And that, in a nutshell, is our, your continental margin, which will include features like the continental shelf, the continental slope, the submarine canyon, and the continental rise. You also may have sometimes something called an island arc. Now, an island arc, it, it forms on the opposite end. When an oceanic crust collides with the continental crust, dead on like this, you will form a trench in between. But this causes the continent to actually bulge up, like you see here. And this bulge will create will have cracks and things like that, which will create a series of volcanoes and mountains underwater, which may actually protrude over the top and create an island arc or a series of islands in the uh, away from the continent. So you actually see an island arc, and then you actually see the the continental um, the rest. So this. This is an example. This on the right side, with plate C, is what would happen plate A if it were to collide with an oceanic crust. And so that's not happening to plate A because instead of colliding with the oceanic crust, this plate is moving that way, and this plate is moving this way, but this plate is moving this way. So think of it in the other side of plate A, you would have something like this, like plate C. And that's what I'm trying to get at. So basically, if the plate A is moving, in this direction right there, um, the other side of plate A will look like this because it will probably be hitting an uh, oceanic crust that's moving this way. And we'll talk more about this when we do actual plate tectonics. But as you can see, that's when you would get an island arc. All right? Now, then let's talk about the deep ocean basin. But I'll do that on the next video when I'll talk about the pieces of the ocean which are, are over continental uh, oceanic crust only. So I'll see you that on the other video.